I am so excited to be here today with one of my best buddies and uh, the, the man that they sometimes call the most interesting man in the world, John Barnwell, <laughs> author of a few books, many articles, longtime radio and cable television personality dude, and one of the great thinkers in the Western tradition. Today we're going to talk about whatever comes up, but uh, I'll keep mentioning these books because it's a focal point. John, welcome. Anyways, it's so good to see you and Tyla, and, and I I'm, I'm just wanted to come here and acknowledge the, the great work that you're doing, you know, because you really have never lost uh, your focus. You know? <laughs> That's right. So it's, it's an honor to be with the two of you here today. Well, I remember you back when you were writing these books, before you wrote these books, and uh, working as a, a real scholar in the field of uh, antiquities and all kinds of things like that. Uh, I'm going to keep referring to the book. This is called The Arcana of the Light of the Path, which is talking about Mabel Collins' book, The Light of the Path, the principal work for theosophical and anthroposophical meditation, and his book, The Arcana of the Grail Angel, probably <laughs> the thickest compendium uh, cosmology out of anthroposophy that has been put in one book, with the pictures and the symbols at the back being completely worth uh, the years of study that it takes to understand what's in there. What can you tell us about Light in the Path, John? Well, it, it, as I uh, was writing my first book, The Arcana of the Grail Angel, The Spiritual Science of the Holy Blood and of the Holy Grail, it's a study uh, developed out of the work of Rudolf Steiner, and uh, it's really a deep study, and that's something, it's like a, a Rennie Corrido, uh, the protege of uh, uh, Walter Johannes Stein called it a compendium, and I think that's a good description. Uh, it gives you so many avenues uh, regarding the Grail Brotherhood and how the inner teachings of esoteric Christianity streamed into Rosicrucianism and was able to be the, the, the foment out of which so many things have arisen in, in the West. Uh, but in considering that, I thought it would be nice to have a meditative tool uh, as, a, as a companion book to that book. And so uh, I went to uh, Light on the Path, which was written down by Mabel Collins. And it's a fascinating book. It was actually the, the first book that Rudolf Steiner worked with with esoteric pupils at the Theosophical Society when he was the head of the esoteric section mm -hmm. in Germany. So it really is pivotal and uh, it wasn't really getting that much attention from, from people that study Rudolf Steiner. And I happened to notice that it has uh, a stanza structure based on 22, which is uh, the magical numbering of the 22 arcana of the tarot. There's 22 major arcana in the tarot. And so I noticed that there was a complete harmony between the stanzas and the, the images of the tarot cards. So, so I thought, well, that's a perfect complement to my first book because I used the, the, the major arcana of the tarot as a storyboard to lay out the history of the Grail and the understanding of cosmic cycles and their spiritual significance. And so in, in the back of both books, I have what I call my Grail diagrams in which I lay out uh, many aspects of the star wisdom and the planetary wisdom that is so uh, central to the Grail tradition and uh, giving you cosmological viewpoints and with input from all manner of teachers uh, throughout the tradition and elsewhere. So is it's that a meditative it? tool. Arcana? Arcana. Arcana is a key. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's a, a concentrated uh, concept or image that, that uh, serves as a key to open the door to a certain facet uh, in this case of the diamond of consciousness that has many facets and if you can learn all of them and com build a complete uh, spiritual hut so to speak of your identity that is something that can carry you into uh, your work in, in a spiritual life and it doesn't matter where you go or how mundane the task may be. Well, so then with the first book 
when this one came out, I would, so many of us said this was kind of the um, other side of Valentin Tomberg's Meditations in the Tarot. Is that, a, is that a true view of that? Well, because the Valentin Tomberg wrote Meditations on the Tarot, and you and I and, and a few of our uh, close friends in what we call the Monastic Club were receiving chapters of that book as it was translated into English out of French. And, you know, we were, and we were getting photographs mailed to us of, of Pope John Paul carrying around a copy. And, and so there was all this buzz going on regarding meditations on the tarot. And, but it went in a particular direction that was diverging from anthroposophy or Rudolf Steiner's spiritual science. And it more, it's more neo-Catholic hermetic path, and that's fine. It's its own thing. Oh, so and this I, is the anthroposophical This is the anthroposophical Meditations in the Tarot. Well, it's, 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 a <laughs> it's a response to it. It's a response to it. Yeah, right. it's not because of it, uh, but it is its own thing. It, it wasn't depending on it. I didn't use that mm -hmm. as a right. storyboard, other than that I used the 22 major arcana of the Tarot as my trestle board. Do you have to be an anthroposophist to understand this? No, uh, actually I wrote it to be uh, more of a wide-angle lens because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are interested in the Grail tradition that don't really know anything about anthroposophy. Okay, okay. so with this book, that comes from Mabel Collins. Mabel Collins was a theosophist and she wrote some really cool books. Some of the, I, I've read all the books I could get of hers in English. They're just beautiful. But that book, Light on the Path, written by Mabel Collins, is the standard, it's the foundation of spiritual development. And when you read it, something happens to you. So I was thrilled when you uh, decided to write that book because I believed that it was a big doorway in anthroposophy. And most people don't know, Steiner talked a lot about Light on the Path and actually used it more or less as an esoteric path uh, for some of his uh, early students. But now, uh, why is Light on the Path in a way more spiritual than her other books? Well, um, the intimation about Light on the Path, and this was confirmed by Mana Blavatsky and also confirmed by Rudolf Steiner himself, that she received it under the inspired guidance of a being who's an initiate who's uh, called Hilarion. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the masters in the West, and he has a specific karma tying into the Greco-Roman period and the Egyptian period. And so that book is very much attuned to uh, the Western streams of esoteric development, as opposed to, say, Buddhism in the East, or Hinduism, or any of the other uh, paths that one might pursue out of theosophical understanding. It's very much a Western tool. And like you said, and I'd refer to previously, it was the very first book that Rudolf Steiner worked with as a meditative tool when he was the head of the esoteric section of the Theosophical Society. Mm -hmm. So that to me makes it very, very significant. Meditative tool? I think that my first book is uh, perhaps more difficult to read, but easier to do. Everybody can be the pure fool of Parsifal. We're all mm -hmm. pure fools, you know, and <laughs> Parsifal is the fool. He's the one who seeks the grail. He's the seeker. He's out there improving his questions. He's on the quest of the grail. Whereas in Light on the Path, this has to do with entering into the adedum of the Temple of Initiation. This is an actual meditative tool that's, mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you the, the, the depth that I feel from, from reading these words. They, there's, there's no compromise in them. And I guarantee to anybody who would read these verses that it's unlike anything you've ever read. I mean, they, they res they're words that resound in you, mm -hmm. and they're meant to be meditated on, repeated, pondered, contemplated, mm -hmm. and, and made a part of your meditative life. This is more of a study. This is going to explain to you the various levels of the physical, etheric, astral, and all the different higher members of a human being, and all the details regarding the tradition and who was involved, this other is a tool. So when Hilarion overlighted Mabel Collins, 
what was that about? I mean, she was already a good writer, and I understand that the problem was that uh, at one point H.P. Blavatsky wrote a novel, but she didn't finish it, and somehow Mabel Collins finished it, and then the two of them had a big falling out, and so she was in good graces for the longest time in the Theosophical Society, one of the major leaders. Incredible impact upon people through her novels, which I think are fantastic, but still do not compare to Light on the Path. And then uh, she gets this direct inspiration from a master. Blavatsky said she was overlighted by masters and spoke with the masters. Here we have Mabel Collins being overlighted by Hilarion. Did Blavatsky ever get overlighted by Hilarion? Well, she knew who it was, and, and she had had relations with him. And the intimation is that he worked very closely with the masters in the West. Hmm. And, uh, but he's one of the ones that's kind of more difficult to, to mm -hmm. get information on. Yeah, I know hardly anything about him, though I hear lots of references to him. You don't get any details, so what are you going to do with that? And here she is, you know, uh, Alice Bailey says she was uh, overlighted by the master Dwal Cool, right? Yeah. And so you have different people, but whatever, when she wrote that, whether it was like um, Johann Valentin Andreas, who was overlighted when he wrote the three documents that created the Rosicrucian Order, uh, and later denied it and said it was a ludubrium, it was a joke, it was a play. Uh, sometimes I, I think that people really are overlighted, and uh, she was in this particular case, but she writes as if she's Novalis in this book, but like on spiritual steroids, uh, but simple. So every person gets it, and logical and sequential, so it, it, it's like climbing the uh, ladder of Jacob. It's a very powerful thing. Now there's another story about this book, and that's that in the back of it are some amazing charts. Unless you go to um, Edward... Hayuk Smith, what's his, what's his middle name? Edward Smith. Edward Rowe Smith. Yes. Okay, Rowe, that's how you say yeah. that. Yeah, which means spirit, right? Uh, I think in, well, it's in his, Hebrew. it's his middle name. Yeah. So he wrote uh, Burning Bush. And in yeah. the back of there were some charts, right? Mm -hmm. And the possibists don't like charts. They say that charts <laughs> are practically not good for you. But that's not true at all. Uh, and so when you come down to charts, the, some charts were secret. And in the back of this book are not only secret charts, but charts that John took and updated by light years and did amazing additions to them so that I can say to you, as someone who's uh, spent uh, decades studying anthroposophy, this book has the best charts that you can find anywhere. Shh, don't tell the anthroposophist. John, what about the secret nature of the charts in your book? Well, I've, I put together an a extensive series of, of charts or diagrams uh, in the Grail Angel book. And uh, I carried all those diagrams, of which is what, some 36 of them. I included all of those in Light on the Path also, plus I added a whole bunch more. And so uh, the, the, the <laughs> genesis of those diagrams are, are from Aaron Fred Pfeiffer who was a direct student of Rudolf Steiner, and he was the founder of Biodynamic Gardening, and he made some diagrams himself by hand, uh, which I had access to many years ago, and I, uh, these are notes from that and from all manner of diagrams. It's to be noted that in the Rosicrucian stream, Having diagrams like this is very much a part of the tradition itself. You mm -hmm. can see it in the, the, the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians by uh, Enricus Matathanus, which Rudolf Steiner referred mm -hmm. to as an earlier precursor to Isis Unveiled that was written by Madame Blavatsky. You also have the books by Jakob mm -hmm. Bima, mm -hmm. with the, the edition by William Law with all those wonderful fold-out cosmological diagrams. So it's very much a part of the Rosicrucian stream to have uh, uh, a magical theater, so to speak. Uh, that reminds me about what Rudolf Steiner said uh, about Amos Comenius. The first picture book, really, in Europe was called Orbis Pictus, right? And it had the world in pictures, it was called, and it had uh, the word next to every item. And this was the first time that words were associated with images, particularly for the public, and also in the vernacular, not only in the Latin. So it had both languages. 
And Amos Comenius was really carrying on the tradition of the Rosicrucians in a way that was started by his friend, uh, um, Andreas. And they were both, of course, in the Unity Brethren. And so you see this thick tradition that symbols can hold everything. Matter of fact, some people say, and matter, matter of fact, in the Gospel of Sophia, Volume 2, there's a picture of the table or tablet of Isis. And this tablet of Isis, people say, the 22 major arcana of the Tarot come from that. Who can say that is true? You've got to look at it pretty carefully. But, and it says, much is in there. I even believe that the structures of the brain are found in there. So these symbols have multi-levels of reaching into you. So when you put something in a chart, it creates a correspondence with hierarchical beings. And that is a powerful Rosicrucian tool, especially in our day and age when, when, when seeing something has everything to do with uh, development. Now, these books, uh, where can we get these? These are on eBay, I understand, right? Yeah, we have them currently available on eBay. Okay, so somebody could and go there, put in John Barnwell. Put in, put in my name, John Barnwell. Or probably the word Arcana, and it'd come Arcana, right up. <laughs> yeah, Arcana, Light, on, uses that light on the Path. But Arcana will bring up both books. Yes. And uh, you'll find that, that uh, there also are some people that think that uh, perhaps this is a departure from Rudolf Steiner's work. Mm. But uh, Rudolf Steiner himself said that those who were initiated into the Egyptian mysteries knew how to interpret this sign, the sign of the Tau, it's a T. They knew too how to read the Book of Thoth, consisting of 78 leaves on which were inscribed all happenings in the world from the beginning to the end, from Alpha to Omega, and which could be read if the signs were rightly put together, these pictures, gave expression to the life that dies and then springs again to new life. Whoever could combine the right numbers with the right pictures were able to read the book. This wisdom of numbers and of pictures had been taught from time immemorial. In the Middle Ages, it was still in the foreground, although little of it survives today. So he said that back in 1906. This book is filled with about 100,000 things just like that. So, which is the perfect, and where else does anybody give you the short version of what I was trying to explain? It's, you find it in this book. So there's so much in this book. It is one of the best uh, compendiums of anthroposophy that you can find. It's a treasure trove. And the Arcana of the Light of the Path is, it's the quickest way to get there, really, when it comes down to it. It just cuts through, doesn't use any terms, just goes directly to what you know to be true and can prove in yourself in your own spiritual it's path. It's a book anybody could read. Yes. Exactly. Uh, it, no matter how humble, uh, our can of light on the path, in fact, is all about being humble uh, and uh, being able to define that place in you to where you have a sense for the sacred. And if you can carry that sense mm -hmm. for the sacred with you, it keeps you above the chaos of the world. One time I was That's explaining exactly right. to this gentleman great. about all the, the, the strange goings on in the world today in politics. He says, you know, I, I find what you're saying very interesting, but why are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. That was wonderful. Great to see you.